Hello everyone, my name is Michael and welcome in episode 3 of this Selenium tutorial series. In this episode, we will go through pagination. So yeah, with that said, let's get into today's video. So in the previous video, I showed you how you can get each product from this Amazon page and then for each product, get the product details like the title, the image URL, the price and also the link to that product. So now in today's video, we have something on the bottom of the Amazon page called pagination. And whenever we go to an Amazon page and we search our category, it almost always have multiple products, not just the 24 products it has on one page, but it has multiple pages. And what we want to do now is go through each page dynamically. So no matter how many pages it got, we will get to each page until we reach the final page and then get each page products information. So let's see how we can do that. So now what we will tell the script to do is basically click next, get the products and we will basically run a while to and we will click next until next as you see here is disabled. So if we go to inspect, so we click inspect, we'll scroll down and then we will hover over next and let me put that inside. And as you see here, whenever the next is disabled, it has a CSS selector called area dash disabled to true. And that's what is telling us that it is disabled. So yeah, let's see now how we can say the script to click next every every time it gets to 25 products, 24 products until the next is disabled. So let's see how we can do that. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code. And here is where we get the items. Now I want to say next underscore actually is next disabled. And here we want to keep track if the next is disabled. By default, it will be to not disabled. And then we will run a while through. And while is next disabled, well, it's not disabled we will do this right here. So while the next button is not disabled, actually currently we are not checking for the next button, we are just checking for the value. So while this value is to false, then we will get the products. But as you see here, we say browser.get. Now that's what will happen in the first, but next, every time we do get the products, we want to click the button next. So what we will do is browser dot find underscore element. We will use the X path and then we will click. Now let me change the selector. So let's go back. Okay, so we will use the class name called s dash pagination dash next. And that's basically the class name for the next button. So let's copy it. Let's go back. And actually we will not use the X path as it's not in it. We will say class name. Let's we will use the class name and here we will define the class name. And here we will use the class name and we will give it the class name. So what it basically does is we tell it to find the element by the class name, use the class name, then whenever you find the element, click it. Now I want to put that to try catch because if we only have one page, it might not have that next button. So yeah, so is next disabled? Let's put it to true. And one more thing we want to test is if actually let's do that first. So let's see if it does click it. So let's run our application. So it gets all products. It clicks next. Let's see. Does it give an error whenever the button is not disabled? But we, what we wanted to do is basically click the next, which it did work as you saw. So now let's go to phase number two, which is to check if the button is disabled. And if it is, we want to update the value, the is next disabled value to true. Now what I want to see is first of all, does it give an error whenever the button is disabled? If it does, then we can just use this one right here and we don't have to do anything else. So let me close the app. Let's close the browser as well. Clear the terminal. And what I want to do is print E error here. And let's run the application. So it gets all the products as you saw, and we got an error. So it says, cannot find CSS selector as pagination does next. But that could be for many reasons. But one reason that could be is because it goes too fast. We are not waiting for the page to load. 
So let's test it with another page with multiple pages. So let me find one. And there we go. Let's use this one, which has almost 400 pages. So let's copy the URL, paste it here and rerun our application. Now, what we want to expect is for it to not give an error. But as you saw, it did give an error. And as I said, this is because we are not waiting for the page to load whenever we click next. So let's see how we can do that. OK, so one trick we can use is we can wait for a certain element to be found. So what we can do is use the web driver, which is web driver await. And whenever we rerun our while true right here, we will try to find the element. Actually, we will wait for the element to be found. So let me copy an example here. And yeah, that's basically it. So what it does right here is it uses our browser. It waits for 10 seconds until a certain selector is found. Now we will use the selector. We try to find our list. So we'll use this one right here. And that's basically it. So what we do right here is we try to find the element. We wait for 10 seconds unless it will crash if it doesn't find it in the next 10 seconds. And we tell it to find it by the CSS selector. And yeah, that's basically it. So what we will do now is sure we don't have to do anything else. That's it. I guess we could put a try catch in case it doesn't find it in the next 10 seconds. But yeah, let's let's try it. So let's put a try catch in case it doesn't load in the next 10 seconds. Actually, it's not try catch. It's try accept. Sorry, I'm confusing it with JavaScript. So yeah, in case of an error, we will say the same thing as we say here. We will basically make the next disabled. So let's say main error here and let's say pagination error. There we go. Now let's try it again. OK, we see the first page. This is normal and we it crashed again. So let's see. No such an element unable to locate element. OK, it couldn't find the click, which is weird. Um, Actually, Let's do something else. We get the error just for the button. So what I want to do is actually wait for the button instead of waiting for the page to load. Or we can wait for both. So let's do that. So let's say button. So let's name it next underscore button. And yeah, let's just delete. And let's replace how it finds that button. There we go. Let's rerun our application. So now we are both waiting for the products to load and the button to be found. And there we go. We don't get any more errors. And as you see right here, it goes through each page, which is great. It works. Now this is 400 pages, so that's not really a great way to test it. So let's go back to the old URL we were using. Let's go up here and I'll replace the URL with the old URL that only has two pages. And let's rerun our application. So it goes through the one page, it goes to the next page. And right now we are not saying, OK, OK, yes, we have an error. It tries to go next, next again and it gets basically the same products nonstop. So let's close it. And yeah, the except doesn't really work. So let's remove that. In case of an error, we are already doing the same thing right here. So we don't have to keep that. And what I want to do instead is so we are getting the attribute from the next button and we will check if that next button has a class name off and we will check if it has the class name of disabled. But it's not exactly that. If we go on the Amazon page and we inspect element whenever we go. Yeah, so whenever we have the next disabled, as you see, it has a class and it's called s does pagination does disabled. So let's get that. Let's say next class names. Actually, it's that. And let's say if and then the substring in next class and then put the is next disabled to true and then break as we don't want to do this one right here. If the class is not there, it will basically don't go through the if statement and then try to click the next button. So yeah, let's test this out. So let's rerun it. And it will normally go to the next page, but we got an error. So let's see what is that is. Element is not attached to the page document. OK, so I find one big issue we have right now. So what we actually did is for each item we got to the next page. So I will do shift and tab and push that outside. So after we get all the products, then we want to click next. So that's probably one of the 
huge errors we had so let's try it again okay now we get the old error we had and now let's put back what we added so what we will do is basically first of all get the class name so let's say next class actually we'll do yeah let's do that and we will do that so we'll get the class names and then we will say if and we will say if it is disabled so let's see actually we can just do if the word disabled is in the class names then set the is next disabled to true and basically break there we go otherwise it will run this one right here or actually let's do that so else click the button there we go even better so let's run it there we go it goes through all products so we get the first products but we never get the other products which is weird so we don't get the second page products okay so what i will do instead is instead of waiting this to load i want the products to load so let's do that and that will probably fix the issue so we get the 24 products and then we get the six products there we go so now let's un uncomment the product information and let's test it one more time and i also want to test it with the 400 pages one so we run it we get the first products there we go and then we get the next page products perfect now let's run let's get the previous url there we go let's copy that with the 400 products and let's paste it there we go now let's rerun our application let's close first of all the browser let's free run our application and we should keep getting the new page product there we go no issue there okay so now let's see how we can save those data for each product so let's go back and what we basically want to do is when we first run our application we will create a json file so let's do that manually so i can show you so we'll do we'll create a json file called data.json with an empty array and then every time we get the products we will push an, an object to this array and the object will contain the title the price the image and the link so yeah let's see how we can do that first of all let's see how we can create an empty json file so first of all we will use the json library and let's go right here and let's say with open and it will try to open json file so let's say dot actually it has to be a string and then data.json and then we have to specify what we want to do and with w we may we want to write otherwise with r we want to read the file but we want to write to that file and then let's say as f and what we will do now is json.dump and then the array and the f so we are basically using the file and we are saying okay take that json which is an empty array make that a string and then save that file now what that will do if we don't have a data.json already it will create the data.json file for us so let's delete the one we created manually and then let's rerun our application and as you will see let's stop the application we have the data.json file created automatically now you can comment that out if you don't want it to do that every time you run application maybe you want to run multiple instances or something like that so you can comment that out and now let's see how we can push an object every time we get a product so let's create a function first of all so i'll define a function right here and i find that from geeks for jigs.org so i'll have the link down in the description if you want to see the example yourself so what this example does is it reads the file name which by default is the data.json we also can give it the new data which i'll show you how you can do that in a bit so it basically reads the file it loads the file content to the file the underscore data variable and then we have to remove that and then we append the new data to that array then we are setting the file current position at offset and then we are converting back to json so we say json.dump we put the file data the new file data use the file right here and this one specifies the format of our json file so it shows the data more like prettier you can remove that if you want but i'll leave it there and let's go back to the for loop of our items 
item in items and under the print let's put write json where we'll put an object and then let's specify the data so let's say title to title price to price image to image and then the link to the link and let's run our application so it will create the new data.json file and it will start adding the products as you see there we go so yeah that's how you can add the products to the data.json file locally and let me stop the app now so yeah that's it for this video let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see next and also hit that like button and the subscribe so you don't miss any of my future episodes and videos on this channel. And also I'd really appreciate if you share this video to your friends so they can also learn Selenium. So yeah, with that said, see you in the next video. Bye bye.